I had this mom, she was, she was in the process of giving birth, like she was good contractions and everything. I'm telling you, she's, she's cramps. Toy, shetani nanyang. I'm like, what? Is it that bad? <laughs> I was like, is this that bad? Because she was so angry and gosh, I remember the anger. We really, I could not see her. She was just in one of those rooms in my phone. And you can tell the nurses like, no, 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 no. You can do it. Hey. Me, I heard that. I was like, guy. Hi guys, my name is Betty Kialo and um, this is my Born in the Oven story. First of all, I've never shared anything about my pregnancy. I've never gotten a platform to do that. But um, once I was asked, I was like, actually, it would be nice to to remember, you know, how Ivana came to this world. I'm sure you all know Ivana, Ivana Ray, or Ivana the Entertainer. So, um, gosh, you know, it's been seven years, so I'm sure I'll forget a lot of things about the pregnancy because it's seven years. I mean. Yeah, maybe unless I would give a, a fresher story if maybe I was expectant, but because I'm not, um, I guess that's the only story to tell right now. So, um, I mean, Ivana, uh, when I knew um, I was pregnant, I was working at KTA and I had just, I don't, no, I hadn't do, like, really started. I think I was about maybe five years into um, working at KTN. So, five years or less. Wait, um, when was it? Um, so Ivana was born 2014, 2014, so it's 2013 that I got pregnant. Um, election year, what was I doing getting pregnant in an election year? Being a journalist in the newsroom. But I, okay, so it happened. Um, so 2013, that means I had been three years at KTN. Yeah, three years. Um, so, you know, I had met the dad, you know, in Kadanganywa, in box. Um, but Ivana's pregnancy came as a surprise because we were planning our wedding and then she came earlier than the wedding. Um, I think that that's a story with so many people. So she came way before like the wedding. We're planning, but you know, now she came. I remember when we had to stop the wedding because we're expecting her to come. We're waiting for her. Uh, I got to know I was pregnant, you know, missed my period. Um, <laughs> you know those days you've missed your period. You know, the first day has come, uh -huh, ja ikuja. Second day, mm -mm. third. You're like, eh, eh, this is gonna be, this is, this is, she just went down. <laughs> So I remember she, so I remember she, you know, I, I, you know, I got to learn I was pregnant. I did a pregnancy test and I was like, wait, but how did that happen? You know how you go back, back in the day, you know, back in time, we're like, Kwani le siku. You know, you remember, Kwani le siku kuliendaji. So you realize like, hey, actually you're pregnant, girl, you know, woman, you're pregnant. And so I think there's that initial shock when you're pregnant because you're like, my gosh, I've just started my career at KTN. I'm like three, four years in. You know, I'm doing it, and you know, my shows are doing great. And finally, you know, people are talking about basic color, da 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 da. da. And then I'm pregnant. Not it's a, like it's a bad thing, but you know, it's like it interrupt, it inter kind of like interrupted my career progression at that time because now you're pregnant, you just kind of like have to slow down, have to be be a bit chilled. Yeah, you know, like you can't go, you know, study out in because you can't drink alcohol. Like you know, it's like you know, interruption, Emisha. So. Um, I remember, you know, I told Dennis and I remember I was like really nervous. I was like, um, hey, so, you know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. And, you know, we, I mean, we just came to terms with it. And then now I remember the first thing was that now how do we tell our parents? How do we, do we, do we get married first? Do we, so it was like, okay, what do we do first? Do, okay, do we just keep quiet? And then we're like, oops, guy, what's this? Huh? You know, <laughs> so we're like, okay, let's just, so I remember after some time we just decided everybody went to their back to their parents, mom. Um, and I remember my mom, because you know, I was already you know, working, I was doing well for myself. My mom was not like really a guy, why? Because I'm already working, I've already left, I'm not living at home. So for her, she was happy, she was like bittersweet. She was like, I wish you guys got married first. So we're like, so do we get married do we have to Arakish? And then we're like, no, 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 let's, there's no point of Arakish, let's just go step by step. And yeah, so first trimester, after all the drama, now, you, now everything settles in. So Ivana was such a nice, in, in, what do you call them, fetus? 
child because <laughs> what do you call it a fetus okay even though it was a very it was so gentle with me honestly the first trimester i didn't i've never ever experienced morning sickness never experienced nothing honestly i never experienced anything i mean my pregnancy was just such a nice thing that happened it was like holiday it was like a vacation you know because i say vacation because people are like, oh, treating you nicely you know you can you can ask for a few things here and there and you can get what you want so it was like a nice time because I, I didn't really have all those um you know issues that you know other women many other women get and i'm so thankful for that i wonder if, if i was to have another child come at atulia evil because the boys are here they're such they're such a they're bullies but anyway i don't know maybe i'll know in the future so yeah ivana was so such a calm baby my first trimester was so nice you know i was looking a bit chubby you know no, no the first trimester actually you don't even look chubby that was the second semester i was walking like a duck and stuff but the first semester trimester trimester i was really like oh, i was okay honestly but i had cravings never imagine my, what my cravings were so you know this chipo is it chipo za is it chipo mwitu zile za barabara pale kando because you know we used to live in south b so there's this place called simkuru kwa njenga na mkuru kwa ruben those one of those set, low income settlements um close to south b i can see it i can even see that lady on the road so i really wanted those chipo mwitu zile za kwele box ya nini that metallic box na nini na zimejama futa hivi I really, I really used to crave for that. So I would walk from my house to the place, or I'd send uh, Dennis to get uh, get this for me. So naile chuzi, naile pili pili. You know, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So that was one of my biggest cravings in the first trimester. And then I also had a craving for amigos. You know those amigos, those corn snacks. This is come a thirty bob, a whole sack of. So imagine, like honestly. It was so funny because you know I remember Dennis was like, ah, "Thank God you're a ch you're a cheap, pregnant woman." Because other people I hear, I hear people crave for diamonds, other people crave for zikas. Me was just craving two chipo mutu and amigos. So so cute. I think that's what. And Ivana, I mean, she was she was cool. Um, I can't remember any other craving that I had. I didn't have expensive cravings, but it's so weird because Ivana is such an expensive baby. So I don't know. Maybe I'll learn a trick because she's so expensive. But during pregnancy, she was the cheapest baby ever. <laughs> baby ever. <laughs> so anyway, so that was the first trimester. So nice. I was really enjoying getting, you know, being pregnant. You know, you're not really showing. Um, yeah, you're not really showing. I can still, I could still be able to go to read the news. And it was nice. Nobody knew. You know, nobody knew. But I used to pee a lot. But that's still okay. Who doesn't pee a lot? So anyway, so coming to my second trimester. Second trimester, I think, is where the rubber meets the road. Because... I didn't have any, I didn't also still have issues. I didn't have issues even on my second trimester because it was, it was just still, still smooth, smooth, smooth sailing. We started going on the clinics, but we started, we started going on the clinics, I think the second month when we knew I was pregnant. Um, fantastic doctor, uh, you know, you know, you know, ultrasound, like a small, like a tadpole, but she's like, oh my gosh, you cry, like, oh my gosh, my baby. This is the time, I don't know why moms were so dramatic, like, oh my gosh, and this is a tadpole. You even barely see it. I don't know, new you look like, wapi, wapi. <laughs> so, anyway, so the second trimester comes, and yeah, Ivana is going, is going, is going. She was really, she really took time before she grew, because she really, exploded when she was like when i was entering my third semester so i was so happy that she was a calm baby because now i was still reading the news um i was very conscious i remember i used to walk in the studio and i have to like kind of like hide my stomach because i don't want people like what she's pregnant young girl she just joined tv the other day so i really want people to go to, to say that and to, you know to be up in my space so i was really appreciative that ivana was so was a calm baby even in growth um yeah, so did the whole, you know, clinics for the last, for the, you know, for the next, you know, I mean, the second trimester. I mean, everybody now, you know, now you starting to be visible, you have to change your clothes, because I mean, I'm being a TV news anchor. Like, you know, things don't fit. 
you have to keep changing your you know your clothes because you don't want to also look over pregnant you know how even somebody is watching this and like I can't go back to your so I didn't want people to feel like that way about me, you know, because I was like, you know, I was, I was still in my game. And then, you know, I used to, in, in, to interview a lot of guests on Friday Briefing. So you'd find that when the guest comes, like, oh my gosh, are you pregnant? And then it's like, when you're pregnant, it's like license for everybody to touch your stomach. Now it's even worse when now you have a guest and then you, you don't want to start the interview when you go back on air, you know, or on the show, like with a, on a negative, whatever, um, note. So they come, can I touch? Fine, touch. Oh my gosh, Shataruka. So, I mean, I went through all that. I mean, I can imagine how many guys, personalities who I used to interview on my show touched my stomach. Thanks, y'all. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so I mean, it was a lot of things. And then now, third semester, it was like, so even my, my, my boss was just like, but you tell, are you okay? Are you, do, do you have to walk in the studio? So I remember I stopped my movement a lot in the studio because I was one of those uncles who used to walk in the studio a lot. I'm here, I'm there, I'm following the camera, I'm all over the place. So after I got bigger, now I had to now chill. And I, was just, I, I just had to like just sit and read the news for the country. Good evening, from start to end. And you, that, that's the thing, one of the things that I really didn't appreciate about being pregnant because now it's interrupted the way I do my thing, you know. Um, other than that, I was, it was okay. So I used to read the news, you know, behind the desk. Many news anchors tried to hide, but me, I was like, you know what? I mean, babe, I mean, I'm pregnant. There's nothing I can do about it. And I was actually really, really excited um, because I never even... Th I think I had never thought of, of myself as a mom yet at that time. So it was like, whoa, girl, you're pregnant. <laughs> girl, you're pregnant. It's like, it's like, it's like the slaying Bessichello was telling, you know, like it was sad that this other Bessichello was pregnant. So, you know, it was just going through all those motions of like, actually I'm pregnant. I want to be a mother. So, yeah, so third trimester is here. I'm now preparing to go to, oh, baby shower. They, I had, I think, two baby showers, and it was really, really dope. I had, I think, I had two because one group of friends were not us. Cause I now laying in this, but I mean, thank God because I got more gifts. <laughs> but I think there was an issue. That's why I had two baby showers. Was it that Dennis was not around? I think maybe he had traveled. But I, didn't, I remember I had two baby showers, but they were all fantastic. And I thank you know my friends for putting up. Uh, you know, such a, you know, beautiful event, you know. You know, we're waiting, I think 38 weeks or that. Is it, the, wait, no, it's not only 30. Okay, the maximum. So now we're waiting, we're like in the last, sec the second last month, we're waiting. Everybody was like, okay, well, but you've been pregnant for a while now. You're walking like a duck, you know, like you start, you look like a truck, you know, and those things where they need to stop. When you see pregnant women at their, at their epitome of pregnancy, just be nice, just be kind. Don't start telling them, Okay, when I tell you, funny, that's not nice. So, <laughs> I'm a guy with kwam kubu haraka. Don't say things like that. They affect us, you know. Um, we've booked, you know, everything. Now we are waiting. One of that day, I remember, we were just being shown around the maternity ward, and then. I had this mom, she was, she was in the process of giving birth, like she was good contractions and everything. I'm telling you, she's, she screams, Toy, shetani nanyang. I'm like, what? Is it that bad? <laughs> I was like, is this that bad? Cause she was so angry and gosh, I remember the anger. I, mean, I could not see her. She was just in one of those rooms and you can tell the nurses like, no, 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 no. You can do it. Hey, me, I heard that. I was like, guy. Um, so I remember I really wanted to have a natural bath, but now I, after hearing that, I just called up my guy and I'm like, listen, um, Dr. Ngayu, fantastic gynecologist. I think I want epidural. I think I want either epidural or C-section because I cannot do the natural birth because I cannot, I cannot handle it basically. And he's like, no, you're going to be fine. I'm like, me, I'm remembering that echo because it was not like an echo. You're tiny, you're tiny. 
<laughs> it was so bad. How do you call your baby like that? Like, gosh, what, what, what amount of pain? But now I got to realize when it was my turn. So I remember, um, so we booked the hospital. Now we were going, we were waiting. I remember the, the day before I gave birth, um, up to South B. I worked from South B. We used to stay in an estate, I've forgotten the name. Um, there from that, it's got Golden Gate. I don't know. I don't know. Can you even Nerco? There's that Nerco. You guys know Nerco. So I remember I walked from that all the way to Winners Chapel, which is quite a distance. So I walked because I was told by the doctor you have to keep walking after so that the, you push the baby down. So I really went. I walked for long. Um, coming back to the house, I was chilling. Nini, nini. Uh -huh. You know, in the evening we're there. You know, with Vanna's dad, it's chilling, chilling, chilling. Then we're like, okay, let's sleep. Nini, nini. Watch at 3 a.m. Ifike. Now, 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 now I understand. Now I understood what that lady was saying. <laughs> what 3 a.m. and I, I, I just I'm woken up by this sharp pain. I'm like, okay, well, is it time? Is it time? Is it time? So Nikalenga even continues because now he's snoring. I'm like in a deep sleep. It's at 3 a.m. I was like, let me just wait for the next contraction. Hey, so it came after some time, like a long, I even slept. And then again, I was like, this is it. This is it. So you know, you've already packed your bags, you know, the cute things. You know, people think that this thing is cute. Like, a, oh, baby shower. Oh my gosh, I can't bear. gender reveal. <sighs> when, that time, when that time comes, where... I went over the time. So anyway, we go to the hospital. Um, I remember being at the entrance of this the machine. Hiya, after before the next contraction, get to the leave before the next contraction. Okay, register before the next contraction. Okay, now I'm in bed. Now I'm waiting. Then I remembered all those lamas things. Wapi, akuna, aki. For me, honestly, apart from even breathing, didn't help. You know how they tell you breathe. I mean, I swear, I don't want to discourage anybody who's watching this video and expecting. Everybody has their own experience, but for me, mine, I mean, I just remember it was painful. It was really, really painful. It was painful. I, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, it's, I don't even know how to explain that pain. It was, it was crazy. Hey, it would really suffer. I love to talk to Kane. You know, like, I to talk to Kane after we suffer if you. So anyway, I'm going to talk to my impressor. I'm going to so anyway, I got on to the bus, and I said, like, oh, Betty Kialo, you know that time you don't want to be Betty Kialo? That time you are like, just, just help me. Oh, Betty Kialo, hi, how are you? So, no, 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 no. Um, and I'm just there like, okay. Okay, hey, they give you that gown where there's nothing in. You, you know, you got nothing. Nothing in there. So it's just this kind of light thing, and you, with like a nini thing on there, like a knot thing. And then I was there waiting. We waited. Dennis was really, really supportive. He was there. Um, you know, there's that ball. I tried it, nothing. So me, I, I liked the, the gas thing because it made you high a bit. Like, and then you forget, then it, you know. So that's what I use, the gas. I don't know, I've forgotten how they call it, but the gas thing. And then you become, then you go, and then you come back. And then so that's what, what's happened. So I, I remember um, by the time I was dilating four inches, is it four centimeters? Guys, it's been a long time. I don't know if it's inches or something, but whatever for the four, you know, you guys know. So by the time I was dilating, it was then I've suffered. By the time I was going to fall, I had suffered, suffered, suffered. Um, not knowing that I was gonna suffer further. So I continued suffering for a long, long time. I mean, we got to the hospital around three, around four o'clock in the morning. Um, and then I was giving birth at 12.21 p.m. 12.21 p.m. You can imagine how many hours of suffering that is. Not easy. So, I mean, I suffered through it. Dennis was there, Trojaribu, Nini, breathe, ball. Hey, me, I'm telling you, when it gets to that point, you just be ready to just, just be ready. Just be ready to, to go through it. Just be ready to go through it. Because I don't think there's anything that I had learned, read before that actually helped in that situation. Because it was just pure pain. So anyway, so um, finally, is it normally 10 centimeters? 10, 10 centimeters? It is <laughs> 10 centimeters. I need to get pregnant. 10 centimeters. So by the time I was getting to nine there, now I'm ready. Now I can feel that I can now see. Oh, I didn't even tell you how the water broke. But then the water breaking, I think, was such a nice thing. It's such a nice feeling. You know how you like, how you are like a kid and then you pee on yourself in bed and you know, you know, you got, you're a child. Nobody's going to tell you nothing. You just 
pee or you because it's warm, so that's how my, my water broke. But I don't know, I think it was forced to break because it had refused. I think they forced it to break and then it broke after a few minutes. Yeah, it, yeah, but it broke. No, 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 wait. No, my water broke. My water broke and I was like, hey, what's there? <laughs> Because it's so warm and it's so, yeah, they did force it. Actually, it broke on itself by itself when I was already in the hospital. And it just, I love it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, okay. So now, but then that was earlier. Now I'm at nine centimeters. And now we're ready to go. The doctors come. Um, I remember actually before I got to nine, at seven, I was, so, no, at six, I was in so much pain. I called my doctor. I was like, you know, I've changed my mind. I don't want natural bath. Actually, I want epidural. Come inject me that thing right now. I'm ready right now. And then the doctor is like, Nico, quite traffic, but I'm on my way. Even if you cap your traffic, you know, I'm almost telling Dennis, Dennis, I'm going to your traffic. I'm just here outside the hospital. I'm, I'm coming. So me, that now confuses me. So I'm really waiting for this guy to come and he don't get your epidural. By the time he was coming, nine centimeters. Good job, doctor. Good job. You tricked me. But I mean, yeah, thank God I did it naturally. So yeah, so you get there and he, get, he, gets, he comes here and wow, we can see the head. I'm like, okay, just just get this baby out now. At least it could some of the other thing that the other lady said. I was like, just get the baby out right now. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a way to explain delivery. Honestly, I don't think there is. I don't think it's just another experience that even the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, do I really want to get pregnant? <laughs> I'm like, Nataka Iki to 10. Na. 10, maybe. So, I mean, I, I mean, you go through the whole thing. It's not, that thing is not easy. I mean, they, they, you know, they try to prepare you. They try to prepare you a lot, but my, my, that thing is not easy. You know, I remember like when, you know, they put your leg, okay, you're lying on the, t on the, on the bed. And then because they don't want you to crush the baby's head, so they put, they hook your legs on the side on some hooks on the bed. And then this happened to Jawezi. for your kids to you can't even like bring your legs together. Aki because I let me tell you a funny story. So when I'm just just about to just enter the whatever for giving birth, for now the process of actually kum tom toto. So this guy walks, I think he confused a visitor, a husband too, I think a wife would he'd come to see his wife. So he confused the room. So he enters my room and finds me like that. Open leg. I remember he had a thermos. I'm telling you the shock on his eye. <laughs> and in that pain, I was like, what is he doing here? Because you know, he entered by mistake. You know, no word, no just send you to go you and all. So he entered the room and I was just like being prepped. Aki guy. Whoever, if you if you're the one and you ever watch this um, this video, Aki, I'm sorry for what you you, you saw. But then I linked, yeah, that guy was shocked. And I don't know how I'm going to be back. I don't know how I'm going to But anyway, from me to you, it's been seven years. I hope you recover. <laughs> what? And I remember you had on a jacket. Yeah, you turned in Baba. I'm going to get to work. I don't even think, I don't know if she, he was shocked because it was Besikialo. Like, what is she doing here? This is not a newsroom. <laughs> What is she doing here? That guy was so shocked. I, remember, I paused my pregnancy, my delivery, to think about him and his future. <laughs> anyway, I hope we've recovered. So anyway, so the doctor comes. Now everything's nailing in. The nurses are there. The nurses are really cool, but they're really... I was attacking jokes. So anyway, so they're like... Yeah, the baby can see the head, they can see the head. The baby came out, cried. I'm like, whoa, you ni kill I'm kissing. I told the baby, Ivana cried. But I'm like, is she okay? Okay, I know there's a crying, like, yeah, yeah. But this was like on steroids, like crying, you know. So she really cried. And then Dennis, you know, cut the umbilical cord, which was really, really special. I mean, it's so funny how when you give birth, Akisha talk, I'm taught to, it's like you forget everything. My mom used to tell me that. But I never used to believe it until it happened. Actually, I was thinking, my mom was telling me at after, at after all this, I'll forget. But it's so funny when you see your baby, I love you do the whole naked thing. The baby's brought in you know, on your bosom, naked, naked, you know, that, they call it bonding, some kind of skin bonding. So when the your baby's put there, Kian Leah, then even when, was, when she was born, she looked a lot like Dennis's family. So Amelia, Akotua, for me, I'm like, guy, I feel now for real, I'm a mom. Like, I'm a calm. So I'm like, she's cute in the stomach. 
Now she was saying, I was so happy. I was really, really happy. But I was not like extreme. Yeah, it was like confusion. It's like, yes, you're happy, but at the same time, you're like, wow, okay. Okay. You know, it's like, and I feel like every woman to some extent, no matter, it depends on the degree, but I feel like many women go through post-traumatic, postpartum. I feel like many women go through it. It just... It just depends on the degree of um, of intensity, but I feel like it is not it is not mentally um, feasible that you can bring you can go through all that, you know, all the whole process, the birthing process, and still just be like, oh, yes, yes. There's just a degree of like shock because I went through it. I was happy, but at the same time, it took it took maybe a few days for me to get acquainted to her because I was like, now she's here. Okay, so. But it was a special. I feel for me because it was gradual. It, be, it was more special because it wasn't like a tick, whoa excitement at once. But it was like those ones that like a build up. Like now I learn this is okay. This is how she is. She's looking for my boob. Now she's you know she's tiny. She's here. Then after I get to you know to, for her to wear all those cute cute things that I was bought from by my two baby showers. What we had bought. You know like the it was like a gradual like welcome into this world. Um, and yeah, I mean that was. That was it, and I was like, I was, and we've lived happily ever after. And Ivana Raina is just a big girl; she's almost my height. So I look at her, and you know, sometimes she's a diva, and she sometimes doesn't listen to me. Well, most times, sometimes she could be, she could have attitudes. Nothing I'm disturbed about it. I like that she's becoming her own person. But I look at her, I'm like, Yanni, if you knew, if you knew, if you knew what she put me through. You know, but at the same time, I think such a, I'm so happy and so lucky to have gone through it naturally. I know very many women sometimes want to do it, but then because of health issues, you know, the birthing process, they're not able to do it. So for me, the natural birth was really, really special. Will I do it? Would I do a natural birth again? Definitely no. I'm going to go the epidural way because that pain... Even I'm not just talking about it, I know even the, the way I think about how bad it was is still not as bad as it is in my head. It is worse. So I don't think I'll go through, I'll, if I was to give birth again, if God gives me another chance to be a mom, I would, um, I would, or to be a mom to a second child, I would be a mom. I would, I would maybe play around with the epidural thing. But then, yeah, I mean, to all moms out there who are expecting, I mean, all the best. Don't let my story scare you. It's just me, okay? I was also a small girl. So maybe that's why. But I think for everybody, there's a new experience for everybody. And I just hope that, you know, you're going to enjoy your experience. I mean, just, I think just embrace it. I mean, it's how God wanted us to give birth, to go through that whole process, the whole journey. So I think it's better if we just embrace it rather than feel like, Oh, it's a punishment. No, it's not. I mean, look at Ivana right now. I mean, I'm happy that I went through that. Um, yeah, and for all the children out there, please respect your mothers because the things they go through to bring you guys to this world. Okay, I'm also talking to myself because also I'm a, my daughter to somebody. Um, let's respect our moms. Also our dads, but our moms, man, the things they go through. But anyway, that's my bunny of the story. And I hope that um, I've made you laugh. I've, um, I've also, I also hope that I've inspired you to get pregnant. It's a nice feeling, honestly. But anyway, I wish you all the best. So much love from me. Yeah, this is BK. Mwah.